Customers show up all the time with their hair on fire. Their investors are pressing them to get products to market as fast as they can. And they come to us and they ask, how long will it take? Even before a product has been designed, we have to find a way to answer that question. And one of the most important aspects of product development is getting parts prototyped as quickly as possible. So we use computerized design tools for mechanical, optical, and electronic components. We then have a whole variety of rapid prototyping service providers that we can go to who can turn around prototype parts in a matter of days. Here at 2014 MD&M East, I've been out talking to some of these service providers and manufacturers of rapid proto prototyping equipment to understand what the latest advances are. One of the strengths of DMLS is that, uh, that you can combine multiple parts that used to be machined and mimmed and, and, and then braced together. Uh, you can make them all in one, one time, over and over and over again, with uh, not a lot of manpower. It's, uh, it's, it's a, basically a printer that's printing in 20 micron layer thicknesses. Out of titanium, out of cobalt chrome, uh, this is a, an eye implant that uh, if someone were in a bad car accident and they had to reconstruct their face, uh, that, you know, they can print things uh, with a mesh that will actually grow back bone. There's, uh, there's other uh, parts being produced that are uh, integrated camera parts and lenses and, uh, and, 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 and gears and so forth. So as for mechanical parts, I found uh, one very exciting vendor here, 3D Systems. They have a, uh, the latest generation uh, stereolithography printer, SLA printer, and they've reduced their resolution now to 16 microns. So this is a, a sample part uh, that they've produced. Uh, it's a round part with a whole series of tiny veins in it and some mounting features. This is not a part that could be produced by conventional machining methodology. This can only be produced by, by digital techniques. Uh, having this kind of capability available allows us to make mechanical parts that we can use, for example, for a very precise lens barrel uh, and spacers and apertures that go into an optomechanical assembly uh, into which we can load optical components. Okay, another supplier that we found uh, is called Protocam, and they specialize in rapid prototyping uh, using a variety of processes, including urethane casting. Uh, and that's a very interesting process for us. So we've been doing this for about 20 years, and we've developed techniques throughout that time to make some very, very clear parts, both raw as well as urethane castings. So typically, if engineers will send us files, we'll print them out in 3D, generally in stereolithography, polish the daylights out of them, and then make uh, urethane castings with temporary RTV molds. The end result, we can cast them in any color we want, but uh, the clears I understand you're interested in, we have uh, specialized in. We make them for medical companies, displaying uh, implant devices for doctors, and uh, we've had great success with it. A lot of our customers are, are very pleased with the results. We can do light tubes and other type applications of lenses, or light conveyance mechanisms, bringing like say from the back of a VCR out to the front panel where you've got your light in one place, but you need to bring it to a different part of the mechanism. So we can use Protocam's urethane casting technology to make a variety of optical components, particularly in the illumination uh, category. Uh, we can cast windows and light pipes that can be used to carry light from a light source to where the light is needed. It's also possible that we may be able to work with a company like this to refine the process to be able to make optical components that are even accurate enough for imaging application. Uh, and that would be the first time that any kind of casting technique could be used for that purpose. That would potentially cut many, many weeks out of the optical prototyping uh, process and would provide a much lower cost alternative to uh, diamond turning plastic optics. But now we need another supplier that can make rapid castings uh, that can be used to form an optical bench to hold a, a whole group of optical components. Uh, we found a company called Armstrong Rapid Manufacturing that has a process called one-shot casting. I wanted to talk about a new way to make metal castings quickly where we're able to take in a CAD file, 3D print up a styrofoam master model surround it with plaster, which then cures, and we melt out the, the styrofoam master. 
leaving a cavity of this shape that we can then fill with aluminum. Now this is aluminum 356 alloy to a T6 heat treat. Well, it will have the same properties as a die casting or other casting properties. And um, able to make it in a week, it costs us about $900 with no tooling. This will allow us to use this part uh, to build assemblies and to perform a whole series of engineering verification tests that will be predictive of what an actual manufactured assembly would be like. So when our clients come to us and ask us, can we get it to market faster, our answer will be, yes we can.